Russia uh, as a place kicker. Um, where do they stand? Where, where's that competition? Uh, place kickers? Yeah, it's kind of Coach Day's question. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's a great question. We've got a lot of a lot of uh, inexperienced guys from our end. You know, we've got one transfer that came in who's played at another place. And then Jake got some reps last year, obviously. Um, they've had a great summer, as Coach said, a great fall so far. You know, we have limited reps live with the team. Um, so they've gotten a lot of reps on their own. And you know, honestly, we've got two or three guys that have kicked in games here that have done a nice job this fall. And one guy that has a lot of experience in other places that they, they've all really had a nice fall so far. No, no one's really stood up and, and, and made a, uh, a name for themselves yet over the other guys, but it's been pretty good. And you know the gunner position is such an important one here. Who, are, who do you think will be their gunners this year? Yeah, I mean, uh, great question. Gunner, so... The history of gunners here is one of the best anywhere. And, and as you know, when I was a GA here, Devin Smith was one of the best in the country. Um, and then you know, you can go through the years and guys like Terry McLaurin and you know Jeff Okuda played gunner for us here. And last year, you know, we had really some experience coming back. Chris Olave, Josh Proctor. We've got a bunch of guys that have done a Cam Brown's run down for us. So a lot of different guys. And then you know, we'll, we'll kind of do that by committee based on you know how many plays guys are getting in offense, defense, and where that 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 flow is going. But really, I mean, we. We have a lot of guys that are big, strong, fast, can run, and, and they've bought in. They love doing that. And so that's not a, that's not something that we're, really, we're overly concerned with at this moment in terms of depth. Julian Fleming and back, I mean, a bunch of guys will be running down for us. That'll be, that'll be a big big positive for us. Uh, right next door, Dave. Hi, Parker. Who will be your primary kickoff returners? Uh, that's still up in the air. Primary kickoff returner, it's... Um, We've got, you know, Demario McCall kicked. He was a returner last season. We had some different guys that have, that have gotten reps back there for us. Uh, right now, we're really trying to figure that out. Honestly, we've got a bunch of guys similar to the conversation about, about gunners. Got a lot of talented athletes that are really good with the football in their hands. And so it'll be some situational, but also we've, we've had a bunch of guys catching balls back there. Some of the running backs, some of the young receivers. It's, we've got some dynamic players if we can, you know, get them going. And then at uh, punt returner, um, I know Garrett returns as the punt returner. Is that his job? And who's kind of competing with him there? Uh, Garrett and, and then Jackson Smith, he's, he's returned punts for us last season as well. And so those guys, are, as of right now, will probably get a good rotation of them. S same, same conversation about how many reps are getting offense, defense, where the game flow is going, how things are really looking on, on that side of the ball, who's back there. And, and, and we feel very comfortable with both of those guys right now. Uh, second row left, Dan. Um, to, to say first team, that's we, we just kind of rep guys back there. You're, you're right, probably on that on that play. Um, I've seen the same thing that other people have seen. You know, uh, kind of when I said there's some young players and some older players that you want the football in their hands. You know, he's certainly one of them, and he, he's one of those guys that's in the rotation. Uh, you know, as you saw at practice, what you want back there, a kickoff returner, is decisive, strong runner that uh, isn't isn't uh, scared to hit the hole when he sees it. So we've got a bunch of guys that are capable of doing that. And he's he's certainly one of them. You know, ball security is number one, definitely number one, because the ultimate job at, at the end of that play is for the offense to have the football. So if you know if you can't trust them back there, that's probably not something you're really going to invest in. Um, but that, that's kind of the the entire offensive culture is you know making sure you have great ball security, and so that wouldn't change any kick returner. Um, and I really don't have experience with guys that are, you know, home run hitters that drop the ball. Fumble. I just that that'd be something I don't have a lot of experience with. Um, certainly, if they can't take care of the football, we don't want to just give it to them. Um, but home run hitters are something that you're always looking for. So there is a balance there. Uh, but number one job is to have the ball at the end of that play. So that, that's really important. It's a good uh, question. Third row left. Nathan? Yeah. Um, so mainly what we do is we, we chart all the reps. We chart everything. We try and make sure that we have, you know, in a, in a true competition, equal reps, equal situations. If you were outside today, you would have seen it was different than yesterday. So in the weather, you have to take that into account a little bit subjectively. But, but mainly what we want to do is we want to give guys equal opportunities, chart the reps, operation time, you know, see how the ball is getting up, see what's going through the uprights. And, and then at the end of the day, there's, there is a little bit of a demeanor factor involved, but, but we're trying to be as objective as we can about just you know, giving them opportunities and seeing what, what happens instead of changing, you know, the other pieces of the puzzle in terms of snapper and holder. We're trying to be consistent and give, you know, equal reps and, and just kind of seeing how it shakes out from there. What do you mean by 
there, there's a little bit of that. I think so. Yeah, that's what I, you know. There's there's a you know in any position you, you want that player to one be confident in himself and two his teammates have confidence in him and and I think we've got that with everybody in our competition at field goal comp uh, in field goals right now. So that's not something that's going to be a big deciding factor. It's really going to be just you know what happens, what balls go through the uprights, and what the, the times and and kind of the, the flight line of the ball looks like is going to be really important. To Nathan's left, Doug. It's a really good question. In, in, in some ways, that's the program that we run here. You know, Coach Day's done a great job of, of instilling that culture in we got to have the best players to play on every play. And, and that could be the best player for that moment. That could be the best play. You know, Chris is one of the best gunners in the country, if not the best. Similar to his, you know, his you know, receiver play, he does the same at gunner. And um, you certainly don't want to use him if you have another guy that, and, and he's tired after a third down. You have another guy that's equally as good because it's the best player on that play in that moment. Um, but you know, Chris will play gunner force. He will, just like I mentioned. You know, Josh Proctor will play gunner force. Th those guys have gotten experience there. They're weapons. Um, certainly, we don't want if he's like I said, tired after a third down incompletion or something. He ran all the way down the field. We have other guys that are very capable of doing that. But that's something that we've had we've had guys buy into a long time. You know, if we don't change the game in the punt, we're going to struggle. So we have to have our best players changing the game every opportunity that they have, especially at that at that position of gunner because of how much premium we place on that. And were you guys on the lookout for a transfer kicker this offseason, wanting to bring in some competition there, or did it just sort of present itself? I kind of go back and remember. I mean, I, I think anytime you have um, you know inexperience, you want to make sure that you have experience. You know, you want to have the right guy doing the right thing. And we, you know, the situation came up and I think it, honestly, I don't remember. I don't remember, but I'm glad we have them. I'm glad we have both. You know, any competition is good. And so, you know, we have both of those two guys you're referencing are very capable and uh, and we have really good competition going right now. Turn row left, Bill. Parker, um, how are you guys balancing, I guess, like the, the rugby style kicking and the traditional drop hunting with Jesse? I know the pro kick Australia guys kind of train both, but here, he did now we're getting into the details here uh <laughs> no it's a it's a really good question and we we've had we've had a lot of conversation about that because um you know if you just look at kind of the overall the, the spiral punt the, the the american traditional spiral punts typically have a little bit higher ceiling um in terms of their hang time their distance a lot of those things and, and then the, the rugby style, or the it doesn't have to be the, the it's just the, the style of the way they're dropping the ball on their foot. So, sometimes they're a little bit, they're end over end, so they don't quite have the same hang time. And so it's, it's uh, it'll be game plan, it'll be situational, you know, and, and Jesse's really good at both of those. And so we're, we're going to try and utilize both as we need to. You have to, as a punt coverage team, you have to cover those two styles differently? Like, we're, we're, is it both, mostly the same, or is it pretty different we try and keep it as consistent as we can for our coverage guys you know part of the job there is to protect for a certain period of time and then to go cover a location on the field that the ball is going to be kicked and, and so really it doesn't the end over end versus the spar really won't impact the, the direction and things that we're doing um, and, and a lot of that will be will be we're trying to keep it as consistent as we can for those coverage guys so that we don't have multiple things that they're going to do and really at the end of the day it's how fast can you you know protect and then run down the field and kind of go play ball third row middle Joey Um, consistency, you know, he, he, he kicks a very nice ball. And I, I know Coach Day spoke on it earlier. Uh, kind of the, the philosophy around here is, you know, we, we, once we get around midfield, we're a pooch team. And then once we get down deep in there, we're trying to score touchdowns. We have to be consistent at, at field goals from a certain range. Um, and then, you know, you've Blake against Northwestern, that was the end of a half situation when we kicked the 50-something yarder. And so for the most part, it's, it's can we be consistent from a mid-range to a short field goal? That's our job. And then those longer range field goals or pooch situations, that's kind of a different conversation. But uh, he, he showed great consistency, kind of the things I referenced earlier. And he's, you know, he kicks a very nice in over and ball. And so that's pretty much what I noticed. Yeah. Third row right. Tony?
I got to ask Chris Fenelon. You know, it's uh, he's been very consistent uh, since the time he got here. And so I think part of how the punter loses black stripe is obviously you got to perform on the field. You got to do a nice job in practice. He's also part of it is becoming one of the guys in the in, in the culture. You know, he's done a great job in the weight room. He's done, done a great done a great job in the locker room. And so all of that goes into it when a punter he has limited reps. He doesn't get as many as other positions do. And so that's what I think Jesse's done a really nice job of is coming in, being one of the guys, working really hard, and then when it's time for him to go, you know, do his job in, in, in punt team practice, he, he does a nice job. And that's kind of what, what he's shown is some of that stuff. Uh, I want them both losing black stripes. That's a that's a loaded question right there. I'd appreciate it though, but uh, no, it's really at the end of the day, you know, we need our we need all our guys to be game ready. That's our big focus right now. Is if you're not ready to go play in a game, what can we do right now to get you ready to go play in a game? And that's that's part of that mentality, the black stripe. And and you know, some guys have different. They need different things at this moment because they played less, they played more, um, and so that's one of those things. It was a big moment for Jesse, and we're real proud of him. Time for a couple more over here to the right, Austin. It depends on what you mean by reps. Um, full team reps live, covering kicks, 50, 60, 70 yards, not a ton of those. That's a lot of running. And so we, we design drills that are competitive and we can, you know, we're staying off the ground and we're, we're working good against good um, to try and go earn spots. That's how we do it. And we'll highlight certain players when they do a really good job on a rep that's a, a, a drill. And then maybe they get one cover rep and then, hey, look, here's how it correlates. Um, and so that's a lot of our competition is in drills. Um, you know, certain teams, we have more spirited team practice. Punt has one that, you know, it's a more confined space and it's, you know, we can go rush pretty good there. But in terms of full speed all the way down the field stuff, well, you're right, we do get limited reps. So we have to take into account all the drill work, all the little things that we're getting done in, you know, in the meeting room. How, how locked in and detailed are they in the meeting room? That's very important too. Um, and that all, that all of that will play in to, to you know, who's going to ultimately play for us. It's been a long time since we've had a real camp, so I honestly don't remember. It, you know, it feels good to be back, good to be, you know, having normal practices, normal meetings. Um, it's obviously, you know, great to be full-time coach and have that you know, honor and, and that, you know, responsibility. It's something I really enjoy every day. I don't know if I would say I necessarily felt any different in the past, but I'm, you know, very happy to be here, glad that we're in a normal camp. So I'm sure good to see you guys in person too, you know, by the way. Time for a couple more, uh, front row right. Tim? Yeah, you brought the word demeanor a while ago about uh, something. I wanted to ask you, is there a demeanor, a common demeanor, a denominator for Chris Olave and David Smith that sets them apart as a gun? Absolutely. Absolutely. It's, 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 you know, the, it's a mindset of not being denied. You know, sometimes it, it, things don't go well. Sometimes you get a double team. Sometimes the ball is kicked away from you. Sometimes, okay, good. But at the end of the day, I'm not going to let that returner go this way. That's really what it comes down to. And those... Those players that obviously have to have a certain athletic skill set, but then when they have that mindset and that demeanor that they want to be the, they want to be the guy to go force the fair catch or to go stop the, the returner from gaining yards. That that's something that you can see, you can feel, and, and and you know obviously Chris is one of the guys. We we've got a number of guys on our on our team that have been that way, and um, and I think that's really it. Just wanting to do it and then the little pride to go get it done. He does. He does. You know, he's a little older than a triple, uh, typical freshman, um, which helps in terms of maturity, like you said. His body's a little bit more developed some, in some ways, and, and I think that he's he's just done a really nice job of, um, you know, it's not that he didn't know American football, but there are some little pieces that we, and he's a quick learner. He got it, and, he, and he's really done a great job in terms of just, handle, like I said, handling himself in the locker room, in the weight room, as a teammate, because that's number one, your job as a football player, and, and then obviously how he's been performing on the field has been, been good, too. Yes, we called him the middle shield. That's right. Yeah, pretty good at it, right? He was very good at it. So who's up now? Got another. That's another competition. You know, losing those. Anytime that we have um, turnover in, in, in major positions on the special teams, it's not always just the punter, the kicker, the snapper. All those, like you referenced, tough Borland was a I mean, tough. 
Justin Hilliard, Baron Browning, Pete, Luke Farrell. I mean, a lot of these guys have played significant snaps here on, in the kicking game, whether it's on punt or KOR or kickoff, whatever. And, and right now we've got some of those, Mitch Rossi, Tommy Eichenberg, Cody Simon. We've got a bunch of different guys, Jeremy Ruckert. Those guys are getting all those reps at that shield level, trying to make sure we get a lot of bodies and a lot of game reps for those guys as best we can, talking about being game ready. And, and those are the guys that are really, you know, stepping up, doing it. Taraja Mitchell, all those guys that have gotten, Taraja started for us in that, uh, three years ago. He's got a lot of reps. And so we've got a good rotation. And that's really what you need, is you need multiple players, like the pair and a spare, as we say, to be able to go out and execute at a high level and, and be game ready. Uh, but we don't have a guy like that's the set guy right now, like Tough Boyle. This time last year, it's, hey, Tough, you got him, let's go. And so that's kind of a conversation we're having every day. And we've got, that's why we have to have so many, you know, spirited, as I say, punt periods to make sure we have enough game reps of those guys getting in it. And last thing, uh, when you're talking about you need your, your field goal kickers to be able to make those mid-range field goal decisions, what's like the back end of that kicker? And I'm trying to figure out kind of like where are you guys thinking more field goal, where are you thinking more puts it down? You know, that's... That'd be a game. It's game to game. Ultimately, we have we talk about the, you know the plan to win, and, and in terms of when you can start the ball further, it's pretty, you start the ball closer to your end zone, you have a higher percentage of scoring. When the defense starts the ball, you know with the ball closer to their end zone, they have a lower percentage of scoring. So we want that's our job. Is in a game, you can go back throughout the years, and there have been situations we pooch the ball, and then based on situation, hey, maybe we need to try and kick along. What's the wind doing? What's the weather doing? So to say a specific number, that's going to be tough. Um, today, you know, if you were outside in the rain today, you know, probably be a pooch situation just because we understand the game flow and how that, you know, the, the defense starting down there is a huge, huge, huge factor. And, and, and this weather is not good or wind's really bad or it's snowing or whatever we're dealing with. So it's really hard to say exactly where that, that line of demarcation is. But at the end of the day, you know, we got to make the ones that Coach Day says, hey, field goal. That's kind of our job. And so that's where we're really, you know, we're, we're working to get that range, like you said, but I don't, I don't have a specific number for you right now.